Hi guys, so this video is coming all the way from Bali. Rocco and I have decided to take a little cheeky six day break away from Sydney to come here, rest, recharge our batteries and spend some much needed quality time together. Now, whilst we were on the plane flying over here, it made me think about all the places I've taken Rocco, all the small and very long flights that we've been on together. We have had a range of different experiences, some of which have been absolutely amazing where the person sitting next to Rocco didn't even notice they were there. And we've also had complete and utter disasters. For example, flying back together from Sydney to London where Rocco threw up the whole entire time so badly that the air hostesses had to put newspaper down on my seat because it was so heavily saturated with vomit. So if you're thinking about or about to embark on a flight with babies, toddlers or kids, hopefully some of these tips will help make the flight that little bit more enjoyable for you. So tip number one is to take a traveling pram. Now this is an example of a traveling pram. They're incredibly lightweight. They are easy to quickly open up and you can actually wheel them onto the plane because they fit into the overhead compartment above your seat. They are really fantastic and obviously you can use them in restaurants and for the rest of your holiday. But let me show you how quickly and easily they open up. Ta-da! So easy, so practical, and so incredibly helpful. And particularly for when you're wandering around the airport, they're getting close to their nap time or bedtime, they're getting a little bit ratty, maybe you're feeling a little bit exhausted, it is so easy to just pop them on that. And Rocco absolutely loves this. He's very comfortable and happy to actually fall asleep in this. And you can, if you want to, put like a black sarong over this if you want to make it nice and dark. Now, previously I've actually had a yo-yo, but unfortunately it actually got stolen. So my girlfriend very, very kindly lent me this. And I will make sure that I put this particular pram in the description box below with the link so you can have a look at it for yourself. In fact, this is extremely well priced. However, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy one of these. You can actually rent them from Gumtree for as little as $30 per week. However, if you're intending on doing lots of travel, I highly recommend actually buying one and owning one yourself. And in fact, I used to use my yo-yo more than my bugaboo. So tip number two is pack snacks. And when I'm saying pack snacks, pack lots of snacks. Whenever I fly with Rocco, he will always get through all the snacks within the first hour of taking off and I am left high and dry and panicking. So pack healthy snacks and ration them out. Also try and pack healthy snacks but then have a few emergency disaster treats for when your child is having a complete utter meltdown and you're at breaking point yourself. Hopefully pulling out a packet of gummy bears or some tiny teddies or even a lollipop to help with their ears may just help settle them down and get them back into a happy place again. Also try and avoid packing messy snacks. Yogurt, for example, is a bad idea and incredibly messy when it goes everywhere. Number three is to check the airport facilities. Now, a lot of airlines in their members lounge actually have dedicated children's area. For example, Qantas have a fantastic kids only area and it is fantastic. There's TVs, there's big sofas, there's heaps of toys. It is so easy and you can just not worry about distracting or just destroying the place. It's completely kid friendly. However, if you're not a frequent flyer and you're not a member of any lounges, it's okay. I actually discovered in Sydney airport whilst walking to our gate that McDonald's actually had a dedicated kids area as well. It wasn't huge by any means, but it was definitely enough to distract and entertain a kid for at least half an hour. Tip number four is to get on the plane early. Normally, I like to get on the plane last. I don't understand why everyone rushes to get on the plane, especially when you're gonna be sitting on your backside for a long period of time. I wanna make the most of being able to stand up and walk around freely while not being squashed on top of people. However, flying with children is oh so different. You've got a lot of stuff you've gotta get on the plane and you wanna get on the plane whilst there's no one on there. So if the opportunity comes up to get on the plane early because you're traveling with children, take it. Get on that plane, get the kids settled, get everything packed away in the overhead compartment while there's space, but also before you sit down and put your seatbelt on and your kids seatbelt on, make sure you pull out all the things that they're going to need to keep them happy in the flight. The last thing you want to do is be their personal slave or personal flight attendant where you're constantly getting up and down, getting stuff out of the overhead compartment, annoying the people around you and constantly, you know, not be able to relax and enjoy the flight yourself. Store the kids' items in the basket in front of you so you can easily reach it the moment they ask for it. 
tip number five is about communication. If you're feeling a little bit apprehensive about getting on this flight with your children, make sure you communicate that. Let the people around you know. For example, let the air hostess know that you're flying and you're a little bit nervous and you've never done this before or you're not feeling that well or the kids aren't feeling that well. They will make sure they keep an eye out for you and check that if you need any help during the flight. I remember my first long distance flight with Rocco and I told the air hostess how nervous I was feeling. It was my first flight. They were so fantastic. They checked on me on a regular basis which made me feel so much more safe and secure. And they also even offered to take Rocco for a little walk around the plane to help give me a break. I also let the person sitting next to me know that I was also feeling a bit nervous. And because of that, they were able to show a little bit of compassion and patience. And when things went wrong, they were a lot more supportive in helping me push through the painful moment of Rocco screaming his head off on a flight. And also if you see another parent on the plane struggling, offer to help them out. Often your maternal skills and experience may be able to just help them out and help give them the strength also to get through that long flight. Tip number six is plan and prepare. Make sure you pack a few toys. Don't forget that teddy bear, blankie or comforter. Something that's going to make the child feel safe and secure and hopefully fall asleep if that's what you want them to do. And make sure you do not leave that blankie or teddy bear on the plane when you get off. And yes, that is a lesson I have learned from experience. Poor Ellie never made it at home. Tip number seven is activities. If you allow your children to use an iPad, make sure you've uploaded new games, new books, new movies, and also make sure you download the entertainment app provided by the airline. Now recently I've become a little bit concerned about how much screen time Rocco is having and I'm consciously trying to really reduce it and cut it down dramatically. So what I did was I actually bought some new Crayola coloring in pens and also some new, a range of different um, coloring in books and even books to try and teach him how to write. Um, and these were absolutely fantastic. I actually even bought a coloring in book from Toys R Us for myself. This was brilliant. He colored in for so much of the flight. He absolutely loved it. And what was great is we actually did coloring in together. And since we've arrived in Bali, he's done so much, he's actually used up all the stickers. He's done so much coloring and he's been, he's just absolutely loved doing this. It has been such a great source of entertainment that has not involved a screen for once. My eighth tip is to try and pack lightly. You do not want to be walking around an airport with heavy bags and having to look after children, particularly children that expect you to be their personal chairlift, like Rocco. But as I have explained heaps of times, try and travel with, as a handbag, a cross-on bag. Now, this I've shown you in heaps of videos, so I won't explain what it is, but I'll put the, the link in the description box below. Perfect for fitting my wallet, my phone, and all our passports, and some international or foreign cash. Absolutely great, and because it's close to the body, I don't need to worry too much about being, um, my bag being snatched. Also, we traveled with wheelie carry-on. Now, normally I would like to travel with a beautiful like Louis Vuitton luggage, but for kids, it's just not practical. This packed easily everything that we needed on the flight. So all the blankies, topo the teddy bear, um, coloring in books, um, all my valuables, and there was heaps of room. And because it wasn't too heavy, Rocco was actually the person who took charge of this suitcase and pushed it around um, the airport because it's got four wheels and it's really nice and easy and smooth to maneuver. And he absolutely loved it. I think he actually was riding on it at one point. And my ninth and final tip for flying with kids is use this time to connect. So many times we get excited about jumping on a plane because we cannot be contacted. No one can email us, no one can text us, no one can call us, it's great. But how about we use this time to actually get to know our children on a deeper level? Spend time talking to them, find out what they've been up to, what their interests are, how they're growing as a person, some you know really nice quality bonding time. As much as we would sometimes love our kids to fall asleep the moment we get on the plane and wake up the moment we land, it's sometimes just not practical or reasonable. And I know myself, I'm very uncomfortable in the back of an economy flight. I don't really sleep that well, so I'm not gonna put that expectation on Rocco. And so instead for me, using the time of going on a flight together, which normally means going on a journey and adventure together, I'm gonna to use this time to connect and bond. Now on that note of connection and quality of time, I'd better run. Our breakfast is ready, and Rocco and I have a big day ahead of us in Bali. I'll see you next week for Money Monday. Ciao.